Let me show you how we can restore colors from this raw file using a bit of Lightroom. As always, if you want to follow along, you can find a link to download the raw file in the description of this video. And now let's begin. So with the raw file opened up in Lightroom, you can see this is almost looking like a black and white image. We are missing a lot of colors. That's because I was using a rather strong ND filter to be able to create a long exposure. However, this ND filter has the downside of kind of reducing the colors and giving the whole image some kind of blue color cast. Now we want to fix that. First, let's open up the basic panel. And right away, I want to change the profile from Adobe Color to Adobe Landscape. This already helps quite a bit with the base saturation of this image. Still, there is a heavy blue color cast and we can fix that by playing around with the white balance settings with the temperature and tint slider. And just like in the previous video, we are trying to get a more neutral white balance by aligning those three peaks up here in the histogram for the red, green and blue colors. How can we do that? That's simple. We want to reduce the blue color cast. So we're going to increase the temperature. And instead of making the image colder, we are going to make it warmer this way. And as I push up the slider, when you take a look at the histogram, you can see how we're nicely aligning those colored peaks, just like this. Now we can also play around with the tint since at this point, we can see a very, very subtle green color cast. So just like before, we want to fix color cast by using the slider here and going in in the other direction. Just a little bit is enough like this. Okay, this is looking much better. Due to the fixed white balance, we now have a few more colors in this image. We can clearly see some green tones in the foreground, but we can also see colors in the sky. Right about here, you can see some warmer tones, while we still have colder tones in here. So that's exactly what we want. Now, before we continue with the colors, we want to get the base exposure right, since at the moment this image lacks contrast and honestly also some details. So the first thing I want to do is to bring down the highlights and hopefully we can get some more visible clouds up here in the sky. I think that worked a bit. And I also want to bring up the shadows just to get a little more brightness out of the darkest parts. And then to add contrast, I'm going to increase the whites. And I'm paying close attention to the histogram because we of course don't want to overexpose anything. Let's try something like this. This adds a lot more punch to this image. We are running into some problems in the sky again as we are losing details of the clouds, but don't worry about that. We can fix that at a later point. For now, for more contrast, I want to bring down the blacks. And again, I'm paying close attention to the histogram, but somewhere around here looks pretty good to me. Okay, now let's also add a bit of texture. And let's add clarity. And maybe let's also add a little bit of dehaze. I'm doing this to get a clean looking image. Now you might think to restore colors in an image like this, all you need to do is bring up the vibrance. And to some extent you're right. But for this scene, it's a little bit trickier than this, since bringing up the vibrance doesn't do much. Except we're getting some toxic looking grass in the foreground. So I'm not going to touch the vibrance and saturation globally. Instead, let's take a look at the masking adjustments. The first thing I want to do here is I want to bring back details in the sky. Therefore, I'm using a linear gradient and I'm just covering most of the sky like this. Right here where the most details are missing. And what I'm doing here is to bring down the exposure. And then let's raise the clarity and I'm going to raise it all the way up. This will help tremendously with the details, but it will also add some kind of very, very ugly noise to this area. To kind of reduce that, I'm going to bring down the texture and make this area a little bit smoother again. And now I'm also going to add a bit of dehaze to help make those clouds pop. Wonderful. Then let me create a radial gradient. With this radial gradient, I want to cover mostly the bright part of the sky on the left side of this image, just like this. I only want to affect the sky. So we do have a problem here with this radial gradient overlapping the landscape. What we can do in this case, 
Simply click on those three dots up here, choose Intersect Mask Width and choose Select Sky. This way, only the portion of the radial gradient overlapping the sky will be affected. And what I want to do in here is I want to bring up the whites to make this area brighter and just introduce more contrast. We don't need to worry about details in here since there aren't any. I also want to add a little bit of color so I'm going to bring up the temperature a bit and I'm also going to bring up the tint. Perfect. Now I do want to adjust this radial gradient some more, maybe make it a little bigger. Okay. Then let's also work on the foreground. I'm going to create a linear gradient and I just want to cover a tiny portion of the foreground and I'm doing this because I want to create some kind of shadow effect. Now with this linear gradient, all I'm doing is to bring down the exposure and I'm just creating this kind of shadow in here. Okay, that looks good. Then let me create one more linear gradient for the foreground like this. And I only want to affect the landscape, not the sky. So I'm going to say subtract and choose sky. Then I'm going to subtract a linear gradient and I'm going to take away the very near foreground like this. Now we can, instead of adding shadow, add some more light. Simply by raising the exposure. And I guess we could also raise the whites. And this way we are creating this very cool looking light effect. Okay, the colors do suffer a little from these adjustments. So what I want to do to fix that is to bring up the temperature slider, adding some kind of golden light on top of this effect, just like this. Perfect. I'm really happy with how this image is looking. There's just one more mask I want to apply. Let's use a simple sky selection. And what I want to do in here is to simply raise the saturation. And by doing this, we are going to bring out all the colors in the sky without affecting the very saturated foreground. So that's the image after the masking adjustments. We started with this and you can see there were almost no colors available. And by just applying a bit of masking, we ended up with this. It looks so much better. Now we can do a little more color grading. So let's go ahead, open up the color mixer and let's see. The first thing I want to do is go into the hue tab and what's bothering me with this image at the moment are those blue color tones in the sky. I want to give them some more of a purple color tone. So I'm going to raise the blue hue. Just a little bit. Then let's head over into the saturation tab and here I want to bring up red orange and let's also bring up yellow. These were mostly colors of the sky. I don't want to change the green color tones because this would make the foreground look a bit too saturated. So let's not change that. Instead, I want to bring down the aqua saturation a bit to fix the sky. And let's also bring down the blue saturation very slightly. Okay, that's much better. Then we still have some more colors in the sky to work on, mainly purple and magenta. So let's just raise these a little bit. Wonderful. And I think we can also head into the luminance tab. Here we can make this field in the foreground a little brighter by bringing up the yellow luminance. So let's just raise it very slightly like this and we are done. Awesome. Now I'm not going to touch the split toning because I don't think this works for this scene. However, I want to go into the calibration tab and just bring up the saturation of all three colors. So red, green, and blue. So here we have a very, very strong effect. I personally like it this way, but if it's too heavy for you, just don't go as crazy. What I'm doing here as well is to bring down the blue primary hue, which kind of adds these very, very cool pastel color tones, which works great for this scene in my opinion. All right, that's almost it for editing this image. Just one more thing, the sharpening in the details tab. So let's bring down the radius, increase the details, hold down the Alt key and increase the masking just around here. And then we wanna bring up the amount of sharpening and we are done. 
Okay, that looks great. Still, you can see a few objects in this image which are kind of distracting. We want to get rid of those. We can give Lightroom's Remove Tool a try. So click on the healing brush up here. And here we want to choose Content Aware Remove. And let's see if this is doing a good job. I'm just painting over all these objects to get rid of them. Now these little poles are quite easy to fix as you can see, but I'm wondering if Lightroom can handle this bigger object just like this. It can actually. So that's great. And while we're at it, let's also clean up the sensor spots. For that, I'm using the heal brush and we can click on visualize spots so we have an easier time to fix those. Okay, and just like this, we have edited this minimalistic landscape image in Lightroom. So I hope this tutorial was interesting and helpful in as always, if you have any questions about editing, let me know in the comments and thank you so much for watching this video.